Hi, I'm Ashel Baniak. I'm a born and raised Boulder native, and the dishes I'm making for you today are dishes that I created about 15 years ago. I started cooking when I was 14 because I was going to Weight Watchers, and my parents wanted to help me become a self-reliant cook in the kitchen, which I did which has been great over the years. I've been able to work with kids and work with adults who maybe otherwise aren't comfortable in the kitchen, which is why I've created dishes that are not complicated, but delicious. And in fact, we're not even gonna use a knife today at all. We're gonna start with pecan cherry chicken, which is boneless, skinless chicken breast that'll be marinated in a little bit of maple syrup and dark cherry juice. We're going to also caramelize pecans in brown sugar so that when you take your bites of delicious moist chicken with sweet cherry and crunchy pecan, it's a really delightful experience. We also have quinoa elbows that will be tossed with marinated artichoke hearts and goat cheese. And the reason I use quinoa elbows is because they stay al dente without being too tough and you can toss it all really nicely, it won't fall apart, and the tanginess of the goat cheese with the herbs in the marinade are really delicious. And then our greens are gonna be pan-fried kale and just a little bit of grapeseed oil. And I wanna introduce you to something I've recently discovered, garlic juice. This stuff is amazing. We're also only gonna use two pans, the three-quart saucepan to cook the quinoa and a cast iron skillet. I'm really excited about the opportunity to go to the Escoffier School for Culinary Arts because I already feel a sense of family and support and encouragement from the administration and my coach Matt and the chefs and I have a theater family and a film family and now I'm going to have a culinary family and I'm very excited about that. The quinoa noodles take about seven minutes. The box will say six to nine but I think seven minutes is just the right amount of time and then when you put it in the strainer shock it with cold water to stop them from cooking. Okay, while the quinoa is cooking, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about chicken. Now, not everybody has a meat thermometer in their kitchen, and I think we all know that if you cut into a chicken before it's done, to see if it's done, you compromise the juiciness. So I'd like to show you what I do to ensure that it's cooked. The first thing you need to do is touch the raw chicken. Not every time, just the first time. So you get an idea of what it's not supposed to be like when it's cooked. It's fleshy, it's soft, it gives Cooked chicken isn't gonna dangle like that. It's gonna hold itself up and be firm. Now we're gonna take just a little bit of maple syrup to put on top. I find that this really helps with juiciness as well. And then you take the juice from the cherries, put that right in there, and then set it aside. The quinoa pasta is finished. You wanna pour it into your strainer and immediately add cold water to it to stop the cooking process. And while that's draining, I like to keep my warm pan right here and take the goat cheese and put it into the warm pan so it will melt a bit. If you need to, you can put it back on the stove on the hot burner. And the reason for this is the quinoa pasta is gonna go into this same pan and the goat cheese is gonna coat the noodles. And then we'll put that into the refrigerator for just a little bit so it can adhere. And then we're gonna add the marinated artichoke hearts and let it sit and then put it into another container that isn't warm. See how that is? Nice and coated. I'm gonna put it into the fridge for a little bit. So while our chicken is still marinating in the cherry juice and the quinoa is in the fridge cooling off, we're gonna do the caramelized pecans, which is simply melted brown sugar and then you're gonna coat the pecans until they get a little bit toasty, but coat it in the sugar and then we're gonna remove it out of the pan and put it onto parchment paper so it can cool off. Starting with a medium high heat, put your brown sugar in. And then make sure you put it on parchment paper so it doesn't stick. You always will have some leftovers so you can snack on them while you're cooking. For the kale, I like to use grapeseed oil. Always start your oil in a hot pan. And I'm gonna put the kale in first and then add the garlic juice. It does tend to splatter a little bit, so be prepared for that. And 
we're ready to cook our chicken breasts. We're gonna do a medium high heat. We're gonna put the chicken and the cherry juice in the pan, cover it. It should take about 15 minutes, and then we can take it off the heat, but leave it in the pan to rest for another five to 10 minutes. That should be more than enough time to cook it. I pulled out the pasta salad. The cheese has chilled. We're gonna go ahead and add the marinade and the artichoke parts. We let our chicken cook for 15 minutes and then we let it sit off heat but stayed in the pan covered for another 10. They're absolutely done. See they hold themselves up. I'm gonna go ahead and plate now. I like to put the chicken down first. Ooh, we're losing chicken. Do these things to the side of the chicken. Then I like to bring the kale down the middle. And then finally, our quinoa pasta salad. All right, so what we have here is a high protein, low carbohydrate meal, which is a little bit of sin with the brown sugar and the pecans. We have cherry pecan chicken, pan fried kale, and quinoa pasta with goat cheese and marinated artichoke hearts. I hope you enjoyed watching. I enjoyed making this for you. Thank you so much, and thank you to Escoffier. I hope you have a great day. I'm Ash Alviniak.